Hi, uh, so today we're, we're differing from the normal format. Um, we're we're going to be presentation heavy in this one, um, just because I couldn't really figure out a better way to get the point across of all the different um, Ethernet speeds that we have. Um, so here I'm talking about the, the different Ethernet speeds that we have across the, uh, the QNAP range. Um, so I'm going to start at uh, 1 gig or gigabit Ethernet and work my way all the way up to 100 gig. Uh, talk about the different NAS and switches that we offer and any add-on cards that we may have to, to help you get to these speeds. Uh, so we'll jump straight into 1 GBE, uh, gigabit Ethernet. Um, it's just ubiquitous. Everything that has an Ethernet port generally has 1 gigabit Ethernet these days. Um, there might be the odd exception. Um, you know, I still see some IP cameras out there with um, uh, just 100 uh, meg Ethernet, uh, which is which is fine for them. You know, they're they're only talking to one thing and they can't generate enough bandwidth to, to need more than 100 meg. Um, but uh, most things are going to be uh, gigabit these days. Every computer device that you'd normally use would be would be uh, gigabit. Um, so when it comes to the compatibility for the NAS, um, I didn't list them out because I'd, I'd have to list out every single NAS that we have and that's a lot. So I've just put every NAS. So every single NAS that we make uh, would either come with a 1 gig Ethernet port or a port that would work at 1 gig. Um, so when I say would work at it, we've, we've normally gone faster on the ones that don't have 1 gig. Um, in every single situation, we've gone to a faster port. So that might be the 2.5 gig standard or even faster. Um, when it comes to our switches as well, um, every single switch that we do, whether it's 1 gig, uh, uh, 2.5 gig, 10 gig, 25 gig, uh, they will all work at 1 gig Ethernet if you use the appropriate connections and cables. Um, so as most devices have it, it is backwards compatible. It's just the ubiquitous standard. So we've got it on, on everything here. So 1 gig is the thing everybody's known about for probably for the past couple of decades. Um, so now we'll jump straight into 2.5 gig. Um, so with 2.5 gig, I've started naming some NAS and NAS series and some switches that we do. Um, so the, the list is a little smaller here. So over time, we'll refresh our um, range. Um, fairly shortly, we should have every single NAS having a minimum of a 2.5 gig LAN port. Quite a lot of them do already, um, but there's still a, a few sort of legacy units out there where we haven't done the upgrade. Um, but in a lot of cases, those legacy ones that, that still only have the 1 gig port, um, they usually have 1 gig and 10 gig. Um, so they, they just haven't been refreshed to have 2.5 gig and 10 gig yet. Um, some highlights. Um, one of the best things about 2.5 gig is it can utilize the existing Cat5e cabling. So if you if you were using um, Cat5e cabling um, in your um, office or home infrastructure where it's all embedded in the walls, wired into the sockets with patch panels and things. Um, you don't have to change any of that to use 2.5 gig. You can simply just change your um, client devices at the ends of the network. So for example, here on my MacBook Pro that I'm using here, um, I've got a small 2.5 gig um, USB-C adapter. Um, so I've got that connected into a switch at 2.5 gig, nice and fast transfers. Um, the NAS I'm using also have 2.5 gig. So it's, a, it's an instant, um, more than doubling of your speed um, for a, a fairly minimal cost that the 2.5 gig uh, switches and, and client uh, cards um, they're not too expensive, so very easy to uh, to do an upgrade to get massive performance gain um, on your network transfers. Um, but 2.5 gig is also completely backwards compatible with all the previous standards like um, gigabit, 1000 megabits per second, 100 megabits per second or 10. Um, so it's, it's really, really useful for the backwards compatibility of it all. Um, and because it's not much more expensive than the, the hardware for gigabit, um, it, it's also not um, much more power consumption either. Um, so when you get to the faster speeds, um, especially things like 25 gig or 40 gig or 100 gig, um, the power consumption really goes up to drive those uh, performance figures on the uh, the chipsets. Um, 2.5 gig, there's almost no penalty. It's uh, a very low power usage um, chipset. Uh, so whilst there's a lot of switches picked out there at the bottom left corner um, of ones that do have 2.5 gig compatibility, I've picked a couple out here just so that you can see what they look like. Um, these are our sort of best selling options. This would be our uh, five port and eight port options. Uh, these are both uh, fairly simple unmanaged switches. Um, all the ports are either uh, a 2.5 gig, so either five of them or eight of them. Um, every single port will also work at, uh, at 1 GBE. Um, basically, if the light flashing on the port is um, orange on the 8 bay one, um, it basically means you're, you're working at a speed slower than 2.5 gig. If it's green, you're working at 2.5 gig. Okay, uh, so now we'll move into 10 gig. Um, and any eagle-eyed uh, viewers among you may have realized I've missed a standard out there, which is the 5 gig standard. 
Um, so whilst 5 gig is out there and we are compatible with it, um, we don't make any NAS that have uh, 5 gig embedded. Um, we have plenty of NAS that work with 5 gig um, embedded, um, but everything that works at 5 gig uh, basically comes with a 10 gig port. So whilst the 10 gig adapter can work um, in some cases at the 5 gig, so when I say in some cases, I mean the copper variety of 10 gig, um, not the fiber variety. So SFP plus connections is either 1 gig or 10 gig. Uh, whereas the 10 base T, uh, 10 G base T, which is the RJ45 socket, um, in all cases there, we can work with, with 5 gig or 2.5 gig as well. Um, so the switches there, I've had to change to a smaller font size. This is by far our biggest switch uh, category here. So I've listed all the switches with 10 gig ports built in as standard, um, quite a lot of them there. Um, and, and the NAS series. Um, you can sort of see a pattern in the, the NAS series there. Basically, if it has a large X toward the end of the part number, um, it means it's got 10 gig built in. Um, so you'd, you'd have to dive deeper into the specs if you wanted to find out if it was the uh, SFP plus sort of fiber variety or whether it was a uh, RJ45 uh, copper variety. Um, but if it has the large X in the part number, it has 10 gig built in, at least one 10 gig port built in as standard. Um, in a lot of our series, um, such as like the X83 XU, um, it would actually come with four 10 gig ports, uh, two of each type, two of the SFP plus um, in, in the HX83 series, that the QUTS Hero version, um, as well as the, the RJ45 version. Um, so SFP plus uh, requires a compatible transceiver with the matching fiber cables. So that would be the, the 10 gig fiber. Um, or you can use a, a DAC, which is a direct attach um, cable, basically. Um, so the, the, the DAC um, option is very simply a copper cable um, that's uh, got some ends on it that talk into the, the fiber port. So it's a little converter to send the signal down copper. Um, they're much cheaper in some cases, uh, but they only work over shorter distances. So if you were cabling, uh, say, within a rack cabinet or something like that, uh, DACs are a really simple way to go. Um, but if you were doing longer distances, you can, uh, of course, use the SFP plus option uh, where you can use um, different transceivers to use different types of cables. Um, we supply transceivers and, and, and DAC cables as well. So if you need one of those, we've got those. Um, 10G base T does require Cat6 or better. So in the copper variety, um, there are some videos I've seen online of people doing um, 10 gig with Cat5e. Um, it does sort of work at short distances, but the, the, the recommendation from the standards groups um, is to go with at least Cat6. So Cat6 is, is rated up to 55 meters. Um, of transmission speed. Um, if you want to go the full 100 that you might be used to with, say, gigabit Ethernet, you'd have to be CAT6A or better. Uh, so CAT6A is just a, a small revision on the CAT6 and a bit more shielding in the cable. And of course, the maximum speed with 10 gig is 10,000 megabits per second or something close to 1200 megabytes a second if you're doing a, a benchmark tool. Um, and in all cases of our implementation of the 10G base T standard, the copper variety, it is backwards compatible to uh, 5 GBE, 2.5 GBE, uh, 1 GBE, as well as lower speeds as well. Um, I do know there are some switches out there that, that might have a a 10 gig copper port but it, it you know based on the chipset that that was using I've, I've seen some manufacturers where they only quote they're compatible at either 10 gig or 1 gig where uh, we're compatible with the the multi-gig ethernet so every mode in between um, with all of our devices um so out of that massive list of switches i had to pick a couple to highlight so i picked the uh, the qsw um, m 12088c uh, it's a managed switch, so it's a, a 12 port switch. Um, when you look at the switch there, you might think it's got more ports. Um, you know, it's definitely got more than the 12 I've said there. So when you're looking at that, um, the way it works is the, the right two banks um, on the, the black switch there. Um, you can choose those ports to either be 10 base T or SFP plus. So for example, there is two port number fives. Uh, if you plug a cable first into the SFP plus port, port number five will be SFP plus. If you plug a port um, into port number eight, uh, that's 10 base T, you can't plug something into port eight that's SFP plus. So it gives you the flexibility that you could either have all 12 be SFP plus, or you could have four be SFP plus as well as um, eight, up to eight uh, being 10 base T if you wanted as well. Um, and uh, looking over there at the, the white one on the right hand side, the QSW M408-4C, uh, this has got um, eight 1GB LAN ports on the left hand side. 
um, as well as four 10 gig combo ports on the right. So just like the, the black switch there, um, they're combo ports. So you can choose ports uh, 9, 10, 11 or 12. They can be either all SFB plus or they can be all 10 base T or any combination you like. Um, so while it looks like you've got eight 10 gig ports there, it is just four. We've, we've drawn little boxes around the ports to show that the pair of ports is, is labeled as one port number. Also, okay, so moving on to the next standard, which is uh, 25 uh, GBE. Um, so we've got a few units here which come with 25 gig embedded. Now, this isn't the whole um, range that would support it. So we do offer some um, expansion cards at 25 gig that would go in a lot of our NAS. Um, so if you wanted to add 25 gig to any of the other NAS, it is possible to do so. Um, it's not that much more expensive for the 25 gig cards compared to 10 gig cards and the 25 gig cards do work at 10 gig speeds as well. Um, instead of using the SFP28 standard of, of 25 GBE, um, it would just use SFP+. Plus. If you use SFP+, plus transceivers or DACs, it will also work at 10 gig as well, um, even, even 1 gig if you needed to as well. Um, so we do have um, a few different switches in this category as well that would work with it. So I've kind of listed um, a lot of the ones that would be sort of the 10 gig base because 25 gig will work at 10 gig standards as well. Um, but I have picked out the, the dedicated 25 gig switch here, which is the QSW-M5216-1T. Uh, uh, so this is 16 SFP28 25 gig ports. Um, and it's also got over there um, to work almost like an uplink if you've got existing 10 gig infrastructure. You do have a 10 base T uh, standard 10 gig port as port 17 as well. Um, now this switch can work as a full 10 gig switch as well. So if you use SFP plus uh, connectors in, in ports 1 through 16, um, it would be just as good as a 10 gig switch as well. Uh, so you, you could have technically 17 10 gig ports all working together. One of them would be a, would be a copper based one, um, but this is a, a really good option um, if you're looking to upgrade the speeds, particularly between um, say items in your server rack or server room. Um, it's a full managed switch, so you can do things like port trunking, um, so whether that's uh, LACP or 802.3 AD link aggregation, however you want to call it. Um, it's known by many things. Uh, you can do that with this switch because it's a managed switch. Uh, so now we'll move on to sort of the last two standards, which would be 40 gig and, and 100 gig. So we don't do any NAS with 40 gig embedded. Um, it is quite speciality. Um, it is, uh, you know, compared to say 10 gig and 25 gig, it is a little bit more expensive to, to purchase the card for 40 gig. But anybody that wants it, um, we have lots and lots of NAS in our product range, um, sort of enterprise racks, enterprise desktops, um, that would be a very suitable companion for this card. Um, so it's got two um, 40 gig Ethernet ports on the back. Uh, so that's a QSFP plus connector. Um, so you must use QSFP plus transceivers or DACs to, to work with this. Uh, and for each port, uh, you can get up to 40,000 megabits per second. Um, so absolutely huge performance out of that. Uh, great for so, sort of server backbone type applications uh, to link to your QNAP, for example. Uh, and moving into the, the final one, which is uh, 100 gig Ethernet. So we've got a couple of 100 gig cards. Um, we've got one from Mellanox that ends in the CX6 part code. And we've also got one from Intel that, that ends in the E810. So that the Mellanox one is the one we're transitioning to from the Intel one. Um, but this, these work in um, basically our all flash arrays. Um, so the very high end all flash arrays, typically the ones with U.2 NVMe drive base. Um, Whilst they could possibly work in lesser NAS, um, there's almost no point because to, to get the speed of this card, you need very fast storage. Your, your storage pool needs to be fast and you just can't do it uh, with, say, SATA drive base. So that's why we've uh, sort of reserved this one for the U.2 NVMe solutions that are out there. Um, so this uses uh, QSFP28 transceivers or DACs. Um, and again, the max speed per port here is 100,000 uh, megabits per second, uh, or we just call it 100 gig ethernet. Um, and there's two ports on that card. Um, but for anybody that wants it, we do have a select few NAS at the very top end uh, that are able to drive the performance of this card, and we have tested compatibility. Um, so hopefully that, that helps. I know it's a different format to usual, um, but, but if anybody does have any questions, ask them in the, in the comment box down below. Uh, and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Uh, we've got lots of cards. So even if you've got an existing QNAP that doesn't have 2.5 gig or faster, we could potentially add it in for you uh, with one of the add-on cards that we have. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.